Hi everybody, Callie here with the Greater Bridgman Area Chamber and Growth Alliance and I'm here today with Adam and we're at Hickory Creek Winery and they are one of the participants in this year's Makers Trail Festival which will be on June 9th from 1 to 10 at Waco Beach in Bridgman, Michigan. And we are here today to check you out, see what you're all about and taste some wine with you today. So yeah. thanks so much for having us. Absolutely, you have a very tough job. I'm sorry I know. to do this all I know, long, I'm taking so. a hit for the team. What can I say? We're proud of you. So you've poured up some wine for us today. I have. What do we have? Well, we are going to go through the 2017 releases. So these are all white wines that were coming from the 2017 harvest. So these are wines that I got to make as a, as a brand new uh, winemaker and winery owner. Um, I took over the winery in September. So uh, yeah, this is the, the fruit that I was able to get from, uh, from local farms around here and process it into wine. So we just released all of these wines probably in the last month or so. So oh, these, wow. are, these are brand new to us. So folks who may be watching the video have been here before have not had these wines. Correct, correct, it's possible. Outstanding, yep. I love being a pioneer. Yep, absolutely. So, so what do we have? Well, we're gonna start with our unplugged Chardonnay. So this is the wine on your right. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, I guess before we get into it, you'll notice uh, compared to the other two wines, this one's a little bit cloudy. Mm -hmm. And it's also got an interesting name as well. Mm -hmm. So we call it unplugged. Um, because it was the first batch of grapes that I got after uh, buying the winery. So I bought the winery on September 8th and on the 25th my first just short of a ton of grapes show up and we get everything through crush and we get everything through destemming and everything just bucket by bucket into the press and we get ready to turn the switch and nothing happened. Uh -oh. So yeah, so that's a gut check moment for a new winemaker. Like, <laughs> what did I get myself did I, into? Did I make right? the wrong yeah. career choice here? So. Um, so anyway, my choices were to just take the free run juice out of it, which yeah. it's kind of the, the weight of the grapes pushing juice out. It's high quality juice, but it's not very much yield. And as a new business owner, I want to get as much as I can out of sure. this, obviously. So um, talking to the, the previous owner who helps me out as a, as a consultant, he says, your other choice is to just jump in the press and press them with your feet. So did you know what you were getting into with no. a pressed Chardonnay? <laughs> so, Anyway, my, my dad was out there helping me and I said, Dad, unplug the press, um, I'm jumping in. So it was a 95 degree day, it was hot, it was sticky, it was miserable, um, but end up making a wine that I'm pretty proud of and I think has an interesting story behind it. So, yeah, well, the question is, do you have video? Because if not, we, it didn't happen. <laughs> we, have, we have a picture of it, which I didn't know was being taken and I think if I would have known at the time, I wouldn't have been happy about it, but I'm glad it was documented. So right. it really happened. But so this is unplugged, it's also unoaked. So a lot of people come in and they're a little bit hesitant to try a Chardonnay. Um, they're used to the, you know, the, the big oaky, buttery, like really ripe fruit that you get from out west. Mm -hmm. This is cool climate Chardonnay. This is gonna drink more like a French Chablis. So it's right. gonna be green apple, lemon lime, tart, some minerality to it. It has a great smell and you're killing me. I need well, to taste this wine. But, but you have to look first because it's a, it's a little bit cloudy uh -huh. too. So we decided to go unfiltered. So it's okay. unplugged unoaked and unfiltered. So this is just grapes and yeast. It's about as natural as it can get. So okay, cheers. cheers. Mm -hmm. You getting the green apple? Mm -hmm. and, and the grape? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It is tart. I like tart. That's delicious. Yep. yep. So a lot of people are surprised when you get a, you know, that tartness out of it, you're getting the, the acidity out of it. You're used to, you know, Chardonnay being buttery and like really full bodied, and this is this is really crisp and refreshing. I think this is going to be a great wine for the summertime. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yep. So, Chardonnay. Yeah. So our next wine is our. Let's see, make sure I get it right. This is our dry Riesling. Okay. Um, so this Riesling is also one of the wines that I was able to make last year. I think we got our grapes in October. Um, it, it was fun to, we had a 2016 Riesling that was the same um, grape, same vineyard, just two different winemakers. So we would do those as a vertical tasting with, with a lot of people. The 16 Riesling was really fruit forward. It had a lot of apricot and peach and kind of that stone fruit that you typically get from a Riesling. This one, as you dig your nose into it, you're gonna get more um, kind of herbal, rosemary, yeah. basil. Oh, and yeah. A lot of minerality to this one too. So you kind of mm -hmm. kind of get the, the soil and the chalkiness and all that good stuff. So, all right. um, yeah. Let's give it a try. And fruit characteristics, oh, I, good. I go with uh, orange peel on this one and mm -hmm. maybe some lemon zest. Mm -hmm. But again, another another tart, 
get that acidity, kind of the, the mouth watering, a little bit of pucker. Yeah, yeah, that's delicious. Yeah, so we're happy with that one. And it was really interesting to taste that next to the 16 and just see how different they can be here. Yeah, here, so. yeah. Yeah, so the last one that we're gonna try today is the Pinot Gris. Ooh, and this so one, good. this one's flying off the shelf. I don't think this is gonna last very long, but this is the wine that, when we bottled this maybe three weeks ago, this was one that, um, I was like, you know what? I think we're gonna be okay as a as a new winemaker. I think this was okay because I was really proud of how this turned out. So we started with really high quality fruit from Glen Vineyards. Um, just the wine turned out really nice. Yeah, we, we put this through filtration. So if you look at this compared to the Chardonnay, mm -hmm. this is really clean and nicely polished, and this one goes goes pretty quickly. All, all these wines are totally dry, but this one it has so much fruit on the palate that it almost tricks you into thinking there's a little sweetness to it. So all right, let's see if you're right. Yeah. He's right. That is really good. But no sugar. But it all but it tastes sweet. Yeah. Almost, doesn't yeah. It? I could sip this all afternoon. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But this one is our most popular uh, of the the white wines right now. So Very good. I'm really happy with how that one turned out. So I'm looking at your glasses, and I, I can't help but notice you have a very unique logo. Mm -hmm. So you just bought the winery in September. Did, did. you inherit the logo and, did. and everything else with it? The logo goes back to the original owners who um, started the winery about 12 years ago. And we get questions about the logo all the time. Some people, they have no idea what it is. Some people are, they think it might be something. So, um, and we get new, new things thrown at us every weekend when people come in and try to guess what it is. But okay. the first one, and I think the most obvious is it looks like half of a wine bottle, right? Yes. That's one most people cork. pick up on. Yep, and the cork. And when we um, do our labels for the wine, we correspond the color of the cork to the wine. So our oh. our Riesling should have a green cork because it's a it's a white wine, and then the um, red wines will have a red cork, and rosés will have a pink cork. So very cool. Yeah, kind of a very cool. Yeah, kind of a cool uh, cool thing to do. So um, the second thing is it's a stylized number three because there were originally three partners that started the winery. So you can, you can okay. really pick that I'll out. I'll give that to you. Yeah. The other one, um, I think it looks like a bird's eye view of the creek. So it almost looks like a- Oh, because you creek. are on a creek. We are, the Hickory Creek's out that way. You okay. can see the, um, the wetlands back there. Um, and then the, the last one that was brought up this weekend that I thought was very creative, someone thought it looked like the driveway coming up and then <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the, the cottage and the winery <laughs> yep, the, the yep. at the end so well regardless of what the logo really means um at the end of the day it means great wine at hickory creek and um i really enjoyed your hospitality thank you so much for having us here Absolutely. your wines are delicious do you have any events coming up that you'd like to tell folks about we do um so a couple things that we're really excited about um we are hosting two WSET courses out here, level one courses. So that's the Wine and Spirits Education Trust. Oh. I went through level three through Napa Valley Wine Academy and my level two instructor, her family has vacation property up here. And we were talking and she said, well, you have a winery there and I'm gonna be here in the summer. We should do a course out here at the winery. So we're gonna do that on June 9th. We're having a level one course and it filled up way faster than we thought. Nice. So um, they asked us to host a second course. So we're doing another level one class in August. So August 11th, and that's still got, I think maybe nine or 10 seats available, so. You have a website? We do. Okay, we do. so it, folks can get on there and get registered and learn more about it. Absolutely. And see everything else that you've got going on here this summer? Absolutely, the, uh, the website has all that information. Um, it will direct people to Napa Valley Wine Academies page to go ahead and sign up and take care of payment, but it can be accessed through our website, also through Instagram and Facebook. Okay. So, so we have that and one other event to mention, um, something I'm very excited about is a winemaker dinner. Um, we are teaming up with the Peasant's Pantry, which is a new cafe delicatessen that's opening in Sawyer. Mm -hmm. um, we're teaming up with uh, their chef to come out here and pair food with our new release wines. So nice. these three wines and then three other wines that we're releasing uh, from the 2017 vintage, each wine will have a course. So we're gonna do a six course dinner upstairs in our event room. So it, we don't have a lot of room, so it's gonna be kind of an intimate setting, maybe 20 to 25 people and good interaction with winemaker and chef and it should be a lot of fun. That for, does for sound fun. That, so. We have another event coming up. It's not so intimate, but it's gonna be one heck of a great party. On June 9th, the Waco Beach uh, is hosting the Maker's Trail Festival from 1 to 10 p.m. 
and we definitely want you to come and sample Hickory Creek's wine as well as all of the other 22 additional makers that will be there bringing, some of them are bringing two and three different kinds of products. So uh, we've got some who are bringing wine and spirits, some are bringing spirits and beer. And so it's going to be a great day. We'll have two huge big tops set up on the shores of Lake Michigan. Check us out at makerstrailfestival.org. You can get your tickets at uh, $10 in advance or 15 at the gate. And we'll hope to see you there. Right, Adam? I'll be there. All right. Cheers to that. Yep. Cheers. Thanks, Kelly. Yay. Thanks.